crazy, unbelievable thing happen. Today I baptized 10 people. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yesterday I baptized somebody. I was going to warn you not to fall in up there, but I guess you already did in there. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a really interesting experience. Um, and I'll kind of tell you the story about how this happened. So there's this farmer. Uh, him and I have been working together for two years. I go usually once a week. I'll go there and work on work out the farm on this old house they have. And usually at the end of the night, every time I go out there, we talk about the Bible. And uh, eventually, you know, I kind of got him thinking the way I was thinking. And last couple three weeks, uh, he started to get serious. And he realized that he needed to be baptized. And uh, he kind of came, came over to the house yesterday morning, and he says, I, I want to get baptized tonight. I said, okay, let's go do it. So we went down to his pond, and I baptized him. Well, he had talked to the rest of his family, and they, you know, and he said, hey, you guys need to be baptized. So this is kind of an interesting thing. So they asked me to come over and talk to them. So I went, I had John Slano from Medina come with me. And we went over to their house. They have a swimming pool there. And John and I talked to them before, we basically just gave them the gospel plan of salvation for about 40 minutes. And uh, I said, does, does anybody want to be baptized? And one person said, yeah, I would like to be baptized. Well, about 10 minutes later, there was 10 people who wanted to be baptized. So, you know, it, it was awesome. And I told John, I said, I can't imagine. I said, I just baptized 10 people. I can't imagine what the apostles felt like mm -hmm. baptizing 3,000 people. But uh, it, it was really cool. And, and, and we did talk to him about being faithful. And John, John said, he goes, you know, he goes, you guys need to attend the Lord's church. And he said, and here's how you know it's the Lord's church. You know, and he said, you know, they're, they're going to be singing, they're going to be taking up a collection, they're going to be partaking of the Lord's Supper every week, just all the acts of worship John went over. He goes, that's how you're going to know the Lord's church. And we kind of left it at that. And I, I kind of left the door and said, hey, I'm here, you want to, you know, I, I look close to them, I said, you want to study further? Let's get together and study further. But tonight, I think what we want to do is let's, let's talk a little bit about personal evangelism. Because this is the I've, I've had home Bible studies with several people now, and a lot of times it happens not when you're ready for it. Or somebody has a Bible one has a Bible question, they have some questions about things, and you're not gonna be prepared. You never will be. So that's why I guess we have to be always ready, right? I think there's a scripture that talks about that, right? We've got to be ready all the time to give an answer. And the only way you can get ready is through personal study. And uh, the first thing, what, what would be the first thing that we would talk about if, so, if somebody was asking us about our religion or how to be saved? What would be the first thing we might talk about? God. God. Right? You might talk about God being the creator of all things. Uh, you might talk about um, uh, God's, uh, the, God's plan for mankind that started back at Genesis, and he made these promises to Abraham, and it goes, and that promises were fulfilled in Jesus, and that Jesus you know, lived a perfect life, and he, and he died on the cross for the sins of mankind. And, uh, you know, so you might start there. What, what's another thing we might talk about? The Bible's the inspired word. Because we got to teach them some way to teach them. Absolutely. So they have to understand the Bible is it. Yeah. The Bible is, is God's word. It was left for mankind. And, and that might lead us into what I, what I, what I always kind of try to go to is let's talk about faith first. And as a, as a big, big umbrella subject, a lot of things fit into faith. 
those things we just mentioned fit into there, right? We talk about God, we, that fits under faith. If we talk about, you know, God's word, that's faith. And, and, and faith and faith in God is believing God's word. So that that's always a good place to start. When you were probably first a Christian, maybe a lot of you when you were kids, you, you learned the five-finger thing, right? Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. You guys heard that before? You know, I usually don't start with the hearing part because I'm doing that. When I'm talking to them, they're hearing. You know, we could go, uh, a good scripture to start with is Romans 10, 17. Right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's a good a good place to jump off from. Um, if you didn't know that Jesus died for our sins, right? You, you wouldn't know that um, that you were convicted, that you were under sin. If you, if you, if you didn't know the gospel to start with, uh, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to respond to it. So, so sometimes we gotta, we got to kind of start with, with a scripture and talk about that. Um, then we might talk about, you know, kind of what faith is. So how do, how do people... What do people put faith in today? Into a box. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the computer? They put it, well, I'm saying they put it into a box. It's, it's like, faith means I agree with this assertion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think about this. Like, have you ever ordered a pizza and paid for it with a credit card over the phone? Did you expect you were going to get a pizza when you went to the place? Well, that's faith, right? When you drove here tonight, did you think, hey, everybody's going to obey the laws of the road so we can make it here without dying? We put faith, it's, faith is not just a Bible concept. It's a concept in life. We put faith in so many things, <laughs> except for Charlie's driving. We're not putting a lot of faith in that just yet. Charlie just got his learner's permit. But he's getting there. So, so we might talk about things that pertain to our faith in God. Money, uh, the, uh, the, our national money system, we put faith in that paper. Yeah. We have to buy something that's actually worth something. Yes. Somebody said, and I, and I love this, this is a, some other preacher used this example. They, they, they said, did George Washington exist? <laughs> and people say, well, yes. Well, have you seen him? Well, no. Well, then how do we know he exists or he existed? It's through the written history that we know. You know, or maybe a, a, a painting that we know that this person was a real person. And we put faith in that. And then I like to use that conversation of talking about what faith is in a worldly sense and then go to the Bible. You know, that the Bible is also a written history, right? Just like any history book we might read. And we're going to put faith in God's Word. Um, what kind of faith are we going to have? Unwavering. An unwavering faith, right? A faith that, that's, that's not going to be, uh, that we're not going to be led from, from one way to the other. Um... We're going to have a faith that is shown. How can we show our faith to other people? By our, by our works. By what? What's that? By living in ourselves. By, yeah, absolutely. By, by living a Christian life. People are going to see that faith in us. So, you know, those are all different things about, you know, faith that we can talk about. And, you know, uh, in Romans, now I'm trying to think, and I can quote it. Uh, uh, without faith it is impossible to please God for those who come to God uh, must believe for those who diligently seek God must believe he is a rewarder of all things or something like that I, I wish I had I got that written down here Yes, 
that Hebrews? It's Hebrews. You're right. Hebrews chapter 11, maybe? Yeah, yeah Hebrews chapter, chapter 11, right. verse 1. Or verse 6, I'm sorry. Yeah, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Those who come to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, right? So somebody who who isn't diligently seeking God certainly isn't going to put any faith in God. Right? That would be just a thing that, that we would do. So those are just different ways. We, you know, as you study the Bible, think about ways that you can talk about how to how to like talk to somebody about what faith is. What does this mean? And then biblically speaking, what does it mean? So that's how I like to start. We start talking about faith. And then we gotta talk about repentance. Right? Because um, maybe the person you're talking to um, has got some sin in their life. And maybe they don't even know it's sin. In fact, I know that like so there were there were more than ten people at this gathering this afternoon. And I know one of those people are homosexual. So this one kid, and he's a good kid, but he's gay. And uh, when I when I talked about what repentance was, one of my favorite verses to use is First Corinthians six and verse nine. You remember what that talks about? It's like a big list of sins. Such were some of you. Right? Yeah, such were some of you. And the idea is so so in, in that scripture, it, I I just went to the Bible and read it. You know. You know, he says, he says, do you not know, do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? And then he lists all of these different sins. Well, I, I like to go there because it does say, and such were some of you. And point out that it doesn't say, and such are some of you. Those, those people had turned away from those things. And, and I think that's a good way to, 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 to explain repentance in a Bible way. I think another one's in, I think it's in Acts chapter 19. Um, you remember when all of the, uh, the it, Paul was in Ephesus and all of the magicians burned their magic books. You remember that? That's a great example to use to, to show that, that those people were all in. Those, those, those books were worth a lot of money and, and they burned them all. And that, that's a good example of, of repentance. Do you have that, Matt? Is it 19? I just think it was earlier than that. I think it's 19. That's stuck in my craw. I was trying to second guess you, so I was looking somewhere else. <laughs> okay. I almost have it. Acts 19, what? Your miracles that's Probably at the end somewhere. Uh, around that way. Yes, 13. Demetrius, the silversmiths, and all that controversy with them. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Great 1919. Oh, you want to read that? Yeah. Okay. okay. And many, and many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and were burning them in the sight of everyone. And they counted up the price of them and it was found to be fifty thousand pieces of silver. And the word of God was prevailing in Rome. That's an example of repentance. Now, what are some other examples of repentance we might use in the Bible? What are some that you might think about? Oh, Paul. He's killing Christians. <laughs> That's a great one. Paul was killing Christians, and then he made a complete 180. What's another another example of repentance that we could use? The Philippian jailer. The Philippian jailer. Um, <laughs> yeah. He washed their wounds. Yep, absolutely. And Peter denied Christ, and then he became a big leader in the church. Absolutely. Uh, Naaman. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Yeah. I mean, there, there's lots of biblical examples. Of what, and, and you don't have to use the ones I use, but we know different Bible stories about repentance, and we can use, we can use those. And the thing is, is just that kind of have a list of those things that somebody says. You know, what is repentance? Well, you, you ought to have an answer for them right away. Maybe a couple answers. Um, I always use the the, uh, the example that, you know, that God hates sin. Right? And when, 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 when we're involved in sin, the only way to get through it is to hate it. you got to be like God. you got to hate that sin. 
Because if you don't, you're going to go back to it. You have to hate it. I found that out when I smoked cigarettes. You know, I had to hate them things to quit them. It's the only way I could quit. And I know there's several people in here that smoked at one time in their life. And if you not, if you didn't smoke, you're way smarter than me. But I can tell you, it was it, that was a horrible thing. But I had to hate them things to quit. It. That's the only way I could do it. And sin's the same way. We got to be like God. We got to hate that. Another thing I like to talk about after I talk about repentance is confession. So when you say confession, what do most people think you're talking about? Catholic confession, right? Confessing your sins, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, that's where Matt sits up here behind the curtain, <laughs> and you go up here and tell him you took a piece of gum from the Kmart, which isn't here anymore. So... <coughs> When we talk about confession, what we're talking about is confessing Christ in front of other people. And, you know, what's the Bible example we typically use for that? Who is the person that converted, that, that confessed that Jesus, that he believed Jesus was the Son of God? Well, I, this was at the jail? Cornelius? Cornelius. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. Oh. So that's like, that's the one like bold example um, you, in the Bible where he says, uh, uh, he says, what hinders me from being baptized? And he says, if you believe with all your heart, you mayest, if you're reading the King James Version. And the eunuch says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the, Son of God. is the Son of God, right? So, I'd like to use that example if I'm studying with somebody or talking to them, I say, well, that's that's a bare minimum, right? If, if, we, if we were going to be baptized, we would, have, we would have to make a bare minimum public confession that we believe in Jesus is the Son of God. But in reality, you know, for us who are Christians... Do we just do that the one time? When Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. So, you know. Yeah, if you don't, I won't. Right? Yeah, and if you don't, I won't. Right, so that confessions, it's, uh, a commentator one time said that uh, the, the bare minimum is you would at least try to tell other people about it. That's the minimum, right? So, so this is kind of going off a little bit. So how, how would we tell somebody about this? How would we get a conversation going? How do you start a religious conversation with somebody? Talking about religious things. Yeah, that's, a, that's one good way. Another way is telling them, if someone asks, what did you do today? Sure. Yeah. Where do you go? Yeah. That asks, that asks another question. Sometimes... People will say something that relates to religion. Somebody may just take the Lord's name in vain. That's an opportunity to talk to somebody. If somebody says something, something you're like, you're like, you know what? It's I, I know you're upset, but it isn't God's fault. You know, it's not God's fault that you hit your hand with a hammer. Sorry that happened. I guess the gist of it is, is you gotta you gotta be ready for for opportunities when they come. You gotta you gotta kind of look for, for holes in which you can talk to somebody. And you gotta do it all the time. It's hard to get somebody to talk about religious things, and it's hard for you to not come off as being too preachy. Because what will that usually do to people? Turn them off. Turn them off. So I think like maybe sometimes the best the, the best luck I've had is just like give them a little bit at a time. You know, just give them a little teaspoonful. And then, you know, the next time maybe 
you know, if they're open to talking about it, a lot of times people will ask you about something. It may be six months later, but they may they may come across say if they have some religious question, and they and they, they may go, you know, that Eldred, he seems to know about religion. I heard him say something about religion one time. I'm going to ask him about that. That's how it works. But we you know we got to be willing to 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 look for those holes in order to say something to people. You know, that's, and that's part of our continued confession. You know? So I'd like to take credit for this thing that happened, but really, you know, it, I had nothing to do with it. Um, John and I talked, and the only thing I talked about was scripture, so it wasn't anything that I came up with. And then he talked to his family. So, you know, it had nothing really to do with me. I just happened to be there, and I was ready to talk about it. So God works in our lives in ways we don't always understand. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of this that, that happened. So I wanted to tell you that Caleb and I were going to corner you after service tonight and, and talk to you about personal evangelism and some ideas you had. So here you are presenting it. I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who I've learned a lot of, of personal evangelism stuff from? Autumn Piercy. Yeah. Autumn Piercy is a lady that goes to Brown Street. Uh, she keeps, like, boxes of Bibles and religious material in her trunk. She is always ready to, to, to talk to somebody. She's prepared, and that's what we got to be. And she was that little, she she was actually I mean both the joy and I, she's very always been a good influence on us just because she's so evangelistic. It's like man, that person is awesome. So you know, there's several members of Brown Street. They're members of Brown Street because of Autumn Pearson. You know, she's the one that brought them in. She does a. Uh, Title searches, I think, is it? Yeah, for like people are buying a house and you have to have your title yeah. search. Yeah. yeah, so that's what she does for a living. So she's in this position where she gets to talk to people all the time. And she's one of those people, she's always looking for that hole, you know, to talk to somebody about something. She's always looking for that in. And maybe you're thinking, well, I don't get to talk to people all the time. Well, here's what I'll tell you. Go find some situation where you can get to talk to people all the time. Right? Whether that's like joining the Lions Club in your local town or whatever, or volunteering somewhere. you got to get out there and meet. You, you, you're not going to spread the gospel by not meeting people. You have to get out there and try to meet people. This whole, all of this whole thing, and, and there's another guy I've studied with for two years, it's all through our 4-H group. So that's how that's how I met all these people. So anyway, so we got we got we've got to confess, and of course, um, you got to talk about baptism, right? So baptism is translated from what word? Baptizo. What's that mean? Immerse. To immerse. Give me a Bible example. Yeah. Acts 238. Acts 238. You're stepping on my sermon this morning. <laughs> we talked about the eunuch. When the eunuch was baptized, it, he, it says he came up out of the water, right? Jesus came up, or no, the eunuch went down into it, and Jesus came up out of it. But I like to use those, you know, I like to talk about baptizo, that it means immerse, and those two biblical examples that illustrate that baptism in the first century was an immersion. Pretty, I mean, it's, these are, you guys know all of this stuff. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. All I'm saying is we gotta, we gotta keep this stuff fresh in our mind all the time. That way when we get a chance to talk to somebody, you know, we're, we're ready. You know, if you don't, if you've ever been hunting, you don't go out hunting with an empty gun, right? You gotta have your gun loaded and ready to go. And the same, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're hunting for Christians. Um, we might talk about what baptism is for. 
We might talk about why we need to be baptized. I like to start with the Great Commission. That's my favorite place to start. Luke chapter 24, Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16. So those are the places I typically go for. Mark 16, 16. He who, is a bat, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Right? As Jesus said that. Luke 24, 47. Jesus says that, uh, that uh, repentance and remission of sin should be preached to all nations. Those are all good things. When we're talking about baptism, we should, we should start with those kind of things. And then and I always say, hey, this is Jesus telling the apostles what they got to do. And we go to Acts chapter 2 and read some of that. And I say, look over here. Here's the apostles doing just what Jesus told them to do. Right? And, and read through that and study it. And, and, you know, we know baptism is for the remission of sins. Um, uh, another another uh, place to go to illustrate that's Romans chapter 6. First six verses. It, it explains... You know, that idea that, that when we're baptized, we put to death our old self and we, or we arise a new creation. And, and you can just read those things and just tell, tell somebody what that means. You ever read a Bible commentary? Well, when you're studying with somebody, that you're the commentary. That's your job is to be the Bible commentary. You read the scripture to somebody and you explain them what it means. Not real tough, really, especially, you know, there's people in here who have been Christian longer than I've been alive. Right? So I know there's people in here that have a lot more knowledge than I do. But these are just basic things, basic, basic things. So we tell them about what baptism is. And, and you know what, we got to talk about being faithful after that. Because so, much of the, so, so many people in the world just believe that, you know, you do this action and then you're good and you can go back to doing what you were doing. Um, Romans chapter 12. That's, that's like a go-to one for me. The first couple of verses of Romans chapter 12. There's a lot of good stuff in Romans. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable for God, which is your reasonable service, right? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's a good springboard. Right? So you read that, and what do you do? You talk to somebody talk about what, what it means to be a, a living sacrifice that God would accept. What are, you know, just, what are those things? Right? You give your time. You give of your means. Right? You would, you would worship God. All of those things are, are kind of wrapped up. You can talk about all of those things there. He says, don't be conformed to this world. Right? So, that, you know, we can talk about, you know, about Ongoing repentance in life. Right? We've all we've all we've all experienced those things where we've where we've done things we ought not to do, and we had to go to God and ask for forgiveness. We have to make those things right. It's a good place to just talk about all of those sorts of things, and all of those things pertain to living the Christian life. So, um, I hope that this has been beneficial to you. What, what will help is, you know, we'll go back to that thing we learned when we were kids, you know, hear, believe, <coughs> repent, confess, be baptized, and of course live faithfully. Put those things down and write your own lesson based on those things. And you'll get more out of, of doing your own study, making your own thing up. You'll get way more out of that than trying to use a tract or something somebody else did. When you when you present the gospel to somebody, you, you certainly want you don't want to look like you're just reading somebody's notes. You want to come to them and and, and show that you know these things. Right? And, and and making up your own lesson is a good way to do it. Every person in this room can do that. 
you know, if you are a Christian, you know how you became a Christian, right? If you've been a Christian for a long time, you know, you know what, you know, making mistakes and, and making them right is all about. So you can talk about all you You have all this information. That being said, I don't believe there's anybody in here that's not a Christian. I can't, I, I don't know of anybody in this room that's not a Christian. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we make some mistakes in life and, you know, sometimes we need to make those things right with God. Sometimes we have struggles. I, I was surprised to hear that, that Mel passed away. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, you know that's, a, that's a hard thing. I know he was a member of here for, what, 50, 60 years? So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's a hard, hard pill to swallow. And I guess maybe, you know, we'll, we'll kind of think about Mel and think about, the sacrifice that Jesus offered for us, maybe as we stand and sing whatever song Matt has picked out for.